Let's talk pruning today. Where should I make my cuts when I prune my Japanese maple? What time of year should I prune my Japanese maple? Should I prune for aesthetics or plant health? We're going to answer these questions and a whole lot more about Japanese maples on this edition of The Plant Doctor. Hey guys, it's The Plant Doctor here. What we have is a garnet Japanese maple that I'm going to be pruning on here today. I want to go over some characteristics of what we're looking for in terms of what to prune, when to prune, and, and shaping this tree in, in general. Uh, first, let's talk about the time of year that I'm pruning. Really, you can prune Japanese maple any time of year. Uh, the only time of year I would really be careful with pruning a Japanese maple is in the middle of summer because what will happen is your outer leaves are going to be taking a bulk of that sunlight and UV light and the inner leaves don't get as much so if we start pruning a lot off the top sometimes what we'll see is sun scald on the leaves inside but other than that uh, you can really prune Japanese maple any time of year I prefer this time of year it is a very chilly February morning. Today is February the 26th here in North Alabama. Uh, the temperature is like 40 degrees, hence the big coat. We've got a north wind. Uh, so I'm going to prune today. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is go in and take out some of the dead wood in this uh, Japanese maple. So the dead wood, we can look at the dead wood here and it's a lighter color. You'll be able to tell if you have dead wood in your Japanese maple. Okay. I'm going to show you what the difference between um, living wood and dead wood. What am I doing here? So living wood is going to have nice healthy buds. And in case of this garnet Japanese maple, the wood is going to be this nice dark, almost maroon red color. Dead wood on a Japanese maple is always going to look like this. I'm going to break this off. See how easy that just snapped. I'm going to get this in focus for you. I notice there's no fatal focus and right right there's no green oh I had it there's no green right here okay there's no cambium in here it's very brittle notice there are no buds on this piece of wood that I just pulled off this is dead wood what I have in my hand look at the difference nice healthy buds nice red wood that we have here. So I'm going through and I'm cutting out. There's some more dead right here. We're going through and cutting out some of these dead branches. And these are the dead branches that we have removed from this Japanese maple. So that's the first thing I always look at is to try to remove some of those dead branches out. After I've removed my dead wood from the tree, there's still a little bit in here, uh, just little bitty tips of branches I'm going to clean up. I'm looking for branches that cross each other. Uh, so there's a branch down in here where one is going over the top of the other and what will happen is when the wind blows those two branches are going to rub and it's going to rub the bark off the branches and expose the canyon layer of the tree and that can lead to infection. So we want to examine our tree for branches that are crossing each other and then do our best to prune in a fashion to, to remove that area where those two branches might rub each other. Now that I have a lot of the dead branching out, there's still a few little bitty twigs I'm going to pull out. The next thing I want to do is start to look at the shape of my tree. In Japanese maples, um, there's all different types of shapes. We can have a vase shape. This one's more of a weeping shape. 
You can have round shapes like a, uh, a blood good Japanese maple would have more of that traditional round shape. Uh, your dissectum Japanese maples, so your nabashidaris, your garnets, uh, crimson queen, they have more of this weeping shape to them. And you want to prune the tree in a fashion to where you're not going against the genetics of the tree. I do not want to encourage this tree to grow upwards. So what I'm not going to do is make it to where this tree is going to want to grow up. I want to prune it in a fashion where it wants to weep. So I'm, I want to leave the lower branches. This, this tree should look more like a shrub where the branches are touching the ground than it does for like a, say, a, a sangu kaku or a blood good where you have a, a trunk and then the, the vegetation on the trunk. So what, what I'm going to go do here is really I'm, I'm looking to thin out the tree a little bit. All right, so I, I'm, I'm going to stand back. I want a nice, round, symmetrical tree here. Uh, and so I'm just going to go around and so this long branch right here, what I'm going to do is, is find two buds. So Japanese maples are what we call um, opposite leaf arrangement. The buds are directly across from each other. I'm going to go just above a bud and I'm going to remove it. Okay, that's all I'm taking off is that right there. I'm going to go around and I'm going to prune this tree in that fashion. Okay, so here is our finished product. Here's what I want you to notice. It's nice and symmetrical. So the left and the right are balanced with each other. I did open up the middle of this tree a little bit. It needed, so there's a light underneath. This is a, a light that comes on in the evenings and it shines, it's beautiful. Uh, when this tree has red foliage, it shines the, fo uh, the light up underneath the foliage. And so I kind of terraced my limbs. I've got a lower set of limbs, and then you can see a little bit of bark. I've got a middle set of limbs, and you can see the bark. And then I've got these limbs up top. And that was the look that I was going for. It still has that nice weeping form that we had talked about earlier that we want to see in our garnets. Do not go against the genetics of the tree. Notice we kept the weep. These branches are going down, those branches are going down. So this turned out really nice. Before we sign off here, there's two things I want to tell you guys. First, uh, a friend of mine and a friend of the channel uh, gave me this hat. You know I always wear like a Snead State hat or Auburn hat usually in the videos. Uh, Mr. Grover Kitchens, thank you for the hat. It's very much appreciated. Uh, Another thing, I want to extend an offer to the, the watchers and, and the, the subs here to the channel. I want to give away a free one gallon blood good Japanese maple as a way of saying thank you for helping our channel grow. We're, we're over 1,500 subs now. I, I never thought that this would be a, a, a thing. And it's become a thing since COVID. I started making videos for my students at Snead State to do plant ID. And I started doing videos for the public and it took off. Uh, so thank you. In order to be eligible for the one gallon blood good Japanese maple, here's what I'm going to ask you to do. Share our YouTube page on your social media, your Facebook, your Twitter, um, whatever you do on social media, put it out there. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel. And then just email me some screenshots, two screenshots, a screenshot of where you put it on your social media, a screenshot that you're subscribed to the channel. I think you guys know how to do that. Uh, and what we'll do, we'll have a drawing. Uh, I'm going to mail out one, one gallon blood good Japanese maples to one of you guys is a thank you. Um, this wouldn't be possible without you guys. 
as always if you have questions put them down in the, the comment section below i appreciate the likes i appreciate you guys subbing to the channel until next time this is the plant doctor